video, I want to invite you to subscribe to the channel as well as to click the notification button. Today we're going to be talking about this honey eye patches that I got at Kohl's. Uh, this one's retail for $22. They had a discount on it, 35% off. So I went ahead and got them because you guys know I love the Peter Thomas Rock eye patches. So we're going to try them and see how they work. And I also have this uh, Wet n Wild Mega Caution foundation SPF 15 I've heard so many good um, good things about it it has coconut uh, it's very hydrating and moisturizing I've never really tried something in a caution so I'm excited to see how this one works and how this one works it says that it expires in the 2019 in October um, so I'm a little bit curious about that and how long is it gonna last uh, this one is in the shade 12 for 12 1a honey beige medium tan it looks very um, cartoony in a way, very friendly, uh, which I'm not opposed. And today I wanted to do kind of a chit chat first, and because a, a lot of you guys have asked me so many personal questions on um, a lot of the reviews that I received, um, and I just was interested into doing something more personal and more up close. I'm gonna do the batches first um, while I let that sink in. I'm gonna start talking and with you guys, I hope you guys, either it's the morning, it's the night, whatever it, whatever it is, here's my coffee. Over here in Indiana, I was expecting it to be more snowy this year, but it hasn't been. I think over the weekend, it will be very, very windy and uh, uh, we're gonna see a little bit of the snow, but overall, this week hasn't been like boom crazy. Um, this one smells for sure um, of the honey which I was not, not excited about it, but hey, give it a try. This is what you do for a living too. So, um, let's see, they don't tingle, they feel comfortable so far, so I'll let you know how it feels. <clears throat> so for all of you guys that are more interested when I do reviews, or when I do, like, you know, a little bit of makeup tutorial or even a try on product, this is probably not gonna be your favorite video. You might probably wanna skip it and watch the next one. But this one is more up, up close and uh, personal. So, I wanted to tell you a little bit more about my personal life, and I think you guys, if, I, if you guys have been following me for a long period of time, you're probably gonna find out, um, you know, more, um, you're gonna, it's kind of like a uh, review of what I've been going through. So, for all of you guys that do not know me, this will be my personal life again. My name is Felipe Laguna Salinas. Um, Originally, I come from Mexico, and then uh, at the age of 21, I moved to um, to the States, and I started living my fir very first year. I started living a couple, uh, I want to say almost a year in um, Indiana, and then I moved back because my mom was sick, and then I, when, I, when, when she recovered, um, I'm the youngest of five children. Um, my youngest sister is 10 years older than me, so I'm 29, she's probably 39 right now, and I want to say that um, as she, my mom recovered, um, she, uh, I decided to move back with my dad. And I lived with my dad for about seven to eight years, I want to say close to that. And <clears throat> he was very, um, he was not always the warmest person, but I've always, I was always raised and I always had in my mind, you know, to have a respect for my parents because you know they are, at the end of the day they are who brought, brought you up here and whether you agree or disagree whether you're happy or not happy of how you were um raised or how you uh you know the stuff that you were given the love that you were given as a, as children um you can't really um control that so um, my dad was never close to me and he was always closer to my to my sisters and my mom um, he was never really a warm, caring person with me. Um, he was always a little bit cold, was a little bit pushing me away. <clears throat> I remember the, the the couple winters that we spent together, I would cook for him something or I would bring something for us. And he was never there. He would always go to Tijuana and I would have to spend it by myself or either working. Um, by the age of... Or about three years, this year is 2019, so I want to say about four years ago, I met my um, partner, whose name is Duamel. And you guys have seen him here. He's such a character. I love him to pieces. 
And honestly, he, I fell in love with him because um, I felt like in my life I was going through so many rough paths and I was working really hard. I was working two jobs at the moment. I was working a, as a manager in a gas station called Chevron. And I was also working as an assistant manager in a 7-Eleven that I had been working for seven years. <clears throat> and I feel like uh, my life had lost at the moment uh, all sense of uh, love. And I guess in the not only the gay culture or it just in general, there are a lot of players and um, I want to say that I started dating at a very young age um, and the fact that it was really hard for me to find true love it really touched me it, it, it was it was very concerning because I was always focused on um, working and working and working and working I was never the person who who would play around, who, you know, go to random hookups or stuff like that. It, that was never me. Um, definitely, it was, I was more in the person who would like to spend my day off traveling, visiting, uh, discovering something new, trying new food, trying a new, new newer stuff for me. So when I, when I met uh, Domel, I met him on the day after my birthday, which is August 7th. So I met him on August 8th at night. And, um... You know, we clicked right right immediately. Of course, nothing was easy. I'm not gonna lie about, about it. Um, the very first year, it was charming, but it was still a little bit hard. We both had like a, our ways to do. You know, like when you know when you when you have your own ways to do things, but you've been by yourself for so long that you just don't allow sometimes people to go in your life and uh, that wasn't me and then Domel was somebody who wanted to wanted me to allow myself him in my life and it was really hard and then he was uh he can be a little bit stubborn I can be a little bit stubborn so it took me a little bit of time to you know make sure we um we clicked and we connected in a better way rather than just like the honeymoon phase so I want to say overall relationships for me Oh, this relationship for me with Domel uh, has taught me that nothing is easy. You can't, it's not about winning or losing, but sometimes you can't just win something. You got to let it go. Uh, and I learned with him that you have to forgive people. You have to forget uh, sometimes um, actions. You have to forgive the, um, that people just really hurt you. And... Um, so when I, I spent the very first six to eight months in California with him, and then I told my dad that I was going to move to Vegas, and we moved to Vegas for a whole year, and we had so much fun. And when I say so much fun, Vegas wasn't drinking, partying, smoking, nothing like that. We had so much fun because we spent more quality time together. We realized we were better combined working together hand in hand rather than just working by itself. In the gas station, I had hired uh, Duamel as my employee, but it didn't work out well. I was such a uh, strong head. I was a mean person back in the day. And he, honestly, I regret that myself, that I was such a, a silly, dumb person. So when we moved to Vegas, we started working. We worked for Asurian. And, oh, he worked for Asurian. I worked for... Um, I always forget the name. Ashurun was the company who worked for with Verizon, and I worked for um, AT and T, which was I have a video on that. I don't remember the name of it, but I worked for uh, AT and T, and in AT and T we worked together, and then he had another job in Ashurun, which with Verizon, and I feel like we worked so well together, um, and it kind of helped us in a way to be a better couple, and then after that. Um, we both stop. We both stopped working for uh, telephone companies uh, as operators, and then we <coughs> working as an operator. It's not hard at all. Um, I want to say that it's super super easy. Um, it just involves a lot of patience, a lot of uh, resilience, a lot of quiet, a quiet time, making sure you listen, because um, most of the times we don't listen. Um, and I, I agree, I, sometimes I just don't listen, I just let it go. And I I just hear, hear people, but I, I don't listen. Um, and I think that's one of our major 
uh, complaints and one of my major problems nowadays. Um, after we finished working for those companies, um, we started working our independent beauty business. And um, when we were in Vegas, we were jumping from one place to another one. It was really hard to find a really good quality place because renting from somebody else, it was always such a harm. It was always so difficult. Uh, we rented from so many Latino people and um, it wasn't easy. Renting from somebody else, it's not easy. Um, many times I got robbed, many times I got told not to, and even though it, it was still my house and you know, I'm a quiet person, I usually go to work go back and sleep nowadays i record videos so of course i do record videos but renting from somebody else it, it implies so much than you could ever think and um it implies gossip it implies um uncomfortable questions like um so why are you gays you know it's like asking why are you straight it, it might not look, sound weird but it's just a question that you you can really you know, respond to it, and those are little tricky questions, plus, excuse me, normal rules that would, people would have in their own homes, like, we don't do laundry, or you're not gonna be able to use my laundry room, or, um, make sure you, you clean the bathroom at least once a week, uh, you and, and Felipe, so it was Mamela and me, and, um, they were not as big complaints, but I'm gonna say that, it was a little bit hard because sometimes you just work really hard and you know it, it just it tends to be hard and then I was doing I was working for a company called um, Jaffra you can also see videos on my early videos some of them were deleted um, I definitely had so much fun but I couldn't do it in, in the places where I rented because you know you need space and people don't really are not really happy about accepting other other strangers into your home and making facials and stuff like that. They were not happy about it. So it really made it difficult on me. Um, and then we did that Jafra and then beauty, in the, beauty independent business with Domel here. And then, um, you know, he's really good with either changing the color in your hair. Also, he, he's been, he was licensed in Puerto Rico. And then the fact that he moved to the States, he had to, he had to relicense and then he had to go through, you know, all these issues. But he's really good with doing different hairstyles and um, he's amazing with makeup, which I have always fallen in love with how his techniques, how he does makeup, but he, it looks flawless to me. I just appreciate everything that he has taught me in life to make me a better person. But moving on, I would say that, um, we moved to California and that's the main reason and that's why I, where I wanted to focus even though it's been almost 13 minutes. Um, we moved to California because of the main reason of my dad. Um, it was it's, it was two years ago <coughs> and it was two years ago and it was Dramela's birthday. It was, it was going to be May 5th, but it was actually May 4th when I received the phone call. I received the phone call. I have four sisters. I have uh, one sister who is uh, mentally disabled. She can't talk. She can't walk by herself. She can't go to the restroom. She can't shower by herself. So, And they are all older, and my mom takes care of my, my sister. So we all live in different places. So one of them lives here in Indiana, and... Um, I received a phone call by the sister who said, you know, um, it's been, and to me in my head, um, I received this phone call and I have her saved on my phone, even though we haven't spoken in about seven years and they don't speak to me because, um, in a way, in their own mindsets, they think that I've, because I'm the only man and I'm the youngest one, I've always been the favorite of my mom, which I don't think it's fair and I don't think it's true, but there's nothing I can do to change people's minds or uh, beliefs or thoughts. So in my head, I was like, okay, well, we haven't talked about a while. So it's this is probably an emergency. And we had just had, a, we, were rent, we were renting our own apartment at the moment and we had barely gotten stable financially. 
uh, and then we were uh, stable as well in our business. We were working towards getting a Hawaii trip, which we actually did. And I think one of the things that bothered me the most is the fact that um, they didn't even care about me. They care about, they had a, um, on a side, um, like a mindset of what they wanted to. They wanted to get something from me rather than just ask how you were doing. All I remember is that they, she said that my dad had been gone missing for uh, a whole week. And because I was never close to my dad, I was more closer to my mom. My mom wasn't, was never told that he we went missing. Uh, so she was like, okay, it's okay. You know, my mom lives in Mexico, so um, she can come here in the States whenever she wants, but she just really enjoys Mexico. So um, my mom was never um, notified that my dad had been gone missing. So I never I never knew that from my mom or my other sister that he had been gone missing. So it was a shock for me. And definitely it was something that I would say that it really broke my heart because they asked me to go the next day um, to go and check and see if I could find him. <coughs> Little did I know that um, he had been gone missing in Tijuana because he went partying, because he went uh, drinking. And that was one of the parts where I never really, even though I don't, tr I try not to judge people or and I don't judge my parents, but I was always mindful and I was always very careful when it comes to drinking alcohol because my dad is an it was an he was an alcoholic, and uh, it's really hard to accept that part of somebody who you truly love and you know respect. And so to me, it was really really um, hard. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about this ones. I do feel like they're tingling a little bit. Again, we're talking about the honey eye patches. They um, not they hurt, but they tingle a little bit around my eye area, and I'm not. I'm not mad about it and they do have a, a, a strong scent of honey so I'm just curious how that's gonna look okay so far so good so you know I'm gonna go ahead and apply a little bit of concealer and see how this works um, I'm gonna apply the concealer bomb uh, time bomb by the bomb and a little bit of the Ulta one. So I realized that uh, my sister was asking me to go and um, go check on my dad, but it wasn't like a regular check. He had been gone missing in Tijuana and I had to go the other day when, where I actually had plans for my partner who was still gonna, I was gonna celebrate secretly his birthday. And it wasn't a, it wasn't a fun thing to do for me mostly because I, I had to tell my, my partner, I had to be honest, and he knew that I wasn't close to my dad, um, but I, he always knows how much love I have for them. And you know, I sacrificed his birthday and I asked him, are you okay if we go over there? Um, and we need to go and check wh what's happening. So we had to go the next day, Cinco de Mayo, um, all the way to from Vegas or Henderson, Nevada to what's it called, um, San Diego, and we looked everywhere we could. We looked in the place where he used to live, and because we didn't have, we were low in money, we had to stay over by um, the garage where my dad lived for his entire life, almost, and we had to stay there with a, a bunch of uh, other Latinos. In California, there are, they have a really nice way to, like, you know, do bathrooms or garages, or garage um, into studios, and they rent that. It's very normal over there in California. Um, I lived in a garage too for a long, for, for as long as I can remember. And so we stayed in the garage uh, overnight for the next four days, and we moved. And all I remember is that we went and took the trip all the way down to um, a couple of clubs where people seemed to know my dad and he was very well known by enjoying drinking and partying and who doesn't and it was really fun for me I was his son and I had other expectations in life I was never 
I, w I, n I never thought I was gonna go and look for somebody who I loved in clubs and when we s I spent the whole day looking for him with my uncle and my partner in San Diego in Tijuana and when we couldn't find him anywhere we started looking in morgues and that was a very scary <sighs> That was a very scary adventure. I'm gonna go ahead and try and make a caution. I think it's already already been dry a little bit. And it's really well applied. So it comes like this, wet and wild with a little sponge. It comes with this little thingy. Okay. Are you gonna see how this looks? I've never tried a caution. Um Okay. And so I started looking at Morgs. People, uh, corpses and I felt like that was not my job I felt like for a reason I was doing that job because God had put me or you know my life had put me in that position but I felt like I was out of place it was really hard to find people or find the bodies of dead bodies and rec try to recognize my dad it was it was hard like when you know somebody, when you're thinking about your son, when you're thinking about your dad, when you're thinking about your husband, think about looking for somebody that you really care and love. And I'm gonna have to say that it's really hard to find somebody that you love and people who are already dead and you don't know what happened. So I'm gonna say that this punch works really well. Like I've never tried a caution but this is giving me the cover, like a very sheer, sheer natural coverage. I'm gonna go ahead and try to see if I can use a different applicator. I'm gonna try to use my, um, I, this one will be dry. This is the Echo Tools sponge. So let's see how much product I have. And I'm gonna, oh, it gives me the very better coverage than what I had before, definitely. And so definitely, it doesn't have a mirror, which is kind of disappointing, but that's okay. That's okay. <clears throat> so I think it was more scary and to me, and it was very um, uncomfortable to try to find my dad and ask to everyone I could for him and see if I could find him in the hospitals. We spent the whole day, we spent at least two days looking for him. Intensely, extremely, um, it was, it was exhausting. That's how I'm gonna put it. It was really exhausting. I cannot describe it in another different way. And I feel like overall, he, trying to find my dad, it was so hard. I couldn't find him. So we decided to go back to Vegas and I was very disappointed in me. I was really hard to, on me to say, how could you not find your dad? How could you, uh, what else could, could, could have you done better, Felipe? And I had always been hard on me and this was the perfect moment to blame it on me. But I realized that it was not my fault. I realized that I tried everything I could. I looked in TJ, Tijuana. I looked in San Diego. There was honestly nothing I could do. So um, I went ahead and I started, um, I went and we started going back to our lives in Vegas. And my sister, the older sister that I have, she was always, if I'm hard on me, she was super hard on me. She was like, how could you not find them? What else can we do better? Um, is there a chance that you guys can go back and move over there? You know, and she wasn't insinuating all the stuff. She was more like demanding that to me. She, and then my younger sister, again, my sisters are more in um, connected to my dad. So my younger sister was like, if I were super close to him, I would probably move over there. You know, it doesn't seem like you care. And, and they were talking to me like one day I would talk to one of them the, the next one would be I'd be talking to the other one and they were like we don't know what's going on we don't know if he's dead we don't know if he's missing we don't know if they have him uh, captive and I was like girl I'm trying to do my life you know I I didn't ask for this and I was not I 
it was my problem because I'm his son, but they were trying to blame it on me and making sure that I understood that I had to do something. Hmm. It looks very good. Very natural coverage, I'm gonna say. But very full coverage, if that makes any sense. So I was just disappointed in how they treated me because I again I had never I haven't I hadn't talked to them for at least seven to eight years. And when they realized I didn't have that much money to be spending overall, they started supporting me financially. And I'm not feeling bad because at the end of the day, I was doing all this by myself with my partner's um, income. And I felt uncomfortable doing that. And so, um, in a way, I feel like I gave, I gave everything I could. And one night, I realized that, you know, when you're eating, when you're going to bed... When you are showering, when it's cold, I ask myself many times if I, if my dad was doing good, if my dad was being covered, if my dad was eating, or if my dad was still alive. And it was really hard on me. My boy, my mom's voice would break over the phone, and all I can remember is I would tell her, it's okay, we're gonna find him. I don't feel like his dad, my dad has died. I feel like my dad's still somewhere. So I decided to talk to my partner and we decided to move back to California and start renting from somebody else. And so we asked one of our Jaffa friends who I, we had met and she is from El Salvador and we I would never forget her because I think she still has some of our stuff after two years, but um, we asked her, are you okay if we leave some of our, most of our um, belongings with you? And she said, I understand, leave them here. And we left one day without even leaving a notice to the apartments. And that's how much we cared. That's how much my partner loves me because he left his life. He, he also left his stability. He loved his um, his people. He was embracing the culture. He was he was being successful in what he was doing, and he never said no. <laughs> so one day, I, I so one day we we just decided to go back to California, and my dad, my my mom had told me that my uncle was gonna help us stay at his place. Little do, little did we know that we were gonna stay in the hallway. Or we, we were gonna sleep on the floor, which we were grateful, but um, my my uncle seemed to be homophobic. Like, if I would hug my, my partner at night, he'd be like, Felipe, what are you doing? You know, stuff like that. And I was just not into it. I was not gonna hide myself, and I didn't feel like holding hands or probably hugging somebody else was disrespectful, but I had to make sure that I understood that where I was, and I was at his place. So I did what I, what I could. And in a couple, and like one day, then I, that night, I understood that I had to find a place for ourselves. And so we moved with this woman who was a little bit, I don't know, I don't want to even go in detail, but she was a little bit nuts. And she, she took advantage of the fact that she saw us a little bit desperate and also she saw us a little bit gay. So I feel like not, all, not everybody seems to be respectful when, see, when they see... Latinas and gay people Just like everyone else and so I felt like okay, this is gonna work um, But it didn't work as much. I'm gonna actually now I'm gonna jump into applying a little bit of highlight We're gonna use this one right here from uh, Macy's. I really fell in love with those brushes I feel like everything has been setting up right now really nice I hope you don't get bored with those videos but if you get bored, tell me. I'm gonna try something new today. I feel like, well, what if I apply bronzer first? I'm gonna bronze it up. This is a take home the bronze. This is a bronzing champion. Um, I really enjoy this bronzer. I feel like it's very natural and they have three different shades. Which one is really light, this one is a medium, and then they have one that's more deeper. So I feel like this ones are, are very powerful. So I'm just gonna go ahead and blend it over here. And so we decided to move with this lady, and we were um, 
But we're still doing the job prep business, but I was mainly focused on trying to find my dad. And I'm gonna say that it wasn't easy. I connected with the officers in, um, I connected with the officers in Tijuana, and he helped us a lot. He was actually the one who, uh, five months later, found my dad and had told the officer in this in the San Diego area. Um, I'm not gonna make it more. I'm not gonna make a longer video, but I just want to say that we stood over uh, in San Diego, and one night we had decided that you know we were running out of money. We were not selling as many Jaffra products, and I, we were just not gonna make it. So we decided that um, to move to LA, and and if we would find my dad, we would just find it and bring it back. But I had spent over five months working, putting um, advertisements on Facebook groups, and from Tijuana to San Diego, English and Spanish, and the radio stations where we're looking for him on the TV news. And no one knew nothing about him. And the people who used to live with him, uh, they didn't know anything. And if they knew anything, they were not going to say anything to not get in trouble. Because not everybody who lived there with us at the moment, or who lived there at the moment with my dad, was, you know, um, immigrants who were documented. So we, were, we respected that. But I felt like overall, my look for my dad, the searching, it was a little bit, it got a little bit hard on me. So I decided to um, to follow Duhamel's point of view and he said, let's move. We're gonna try this one, so they are Academy of Color. This one's our highlighter. This one is a cold one. It retails for $5 and I think this is only at Kohl's. So um, I told Duhamel, we're gonna move to Los Angeles and we're gonna see how it works. Um, so we, which we did. We were ready for it, so we were. We had been spending for at least a week. Uh, every single night, we would go back to sleep at, at, at our car with our dogs, because we had run out of money, and we were not gonna spend more money in renting places. We, we were so sure about that that we decided that renting from somebody else um, it was not the best idea, you know. Um, and we decided to do that because the experience that we had with the lady who rented us their room, it, it got really wild. So I decided not to do that. I'm gonna use my Smashbox um, highlighting um, for the gold one. So anyway, I just don't wanna make it longer. Um, mm, very nice payoff. I like it, I really enjoy it. Hmm, very good. I don't know what it is, but I'm living for this color. And we're gonna try this one. This one is yeah, the blue one. Again, this is from the Academy of Color. This is on the shade Kaleidoscope. And you can only find this one's in Kohl's. So we decided to, uh, one night, we decided, we agreed that we were gonna move back to Los Angeles and live our lives like it's golden. And so this, the, day, the day after that, um, I received a phone call by the um, officer and she said, we have good and bad news. And so my heart stopped. Mostly because Domel wasn't there, Domel was in the restroom. So I got this phone call by myself. All right, I'm living for it a little bit. Hmm, do you guys see it? So this lady told us that um, they had found my dad, which was the good news. The bad news is that I had to travel all the way to the far away from Tijuana, like at least two to three hours, which I did. And the experience was overwhelming. I had to go for him and he, he had been unconscious for at least two months. He was being beaten. Um, all I know that's that the, um, they said that uh, whoever brought him here, brought him to the place where I picked him up, um, was not careful enough with him, and he had been uh, like he. Um, I remember that he, even my dad would tell us when he would remember a little bit 
that he was dancing, he would remember he was dancing and he was enjoying it, but then at um, like, an unexpected moment he was, you know, punched and he fell on the floor and uh, that's all he could remember, all he could rep repeat when he recovered a little bit of his memories and he said that he was dancing with this woman and after um, he, they took this, the dangers of him, they like, they gang on him. They took everything, like wallet, IDs, money, the golden dentures that he had been working for a longer time. Uh, they took his hat. He was always one one person that he would always wear a hat. And I feel really bad. I feel sorry that he had to go through that experience and I was not there. And of course I was not gonna be there because I'm not, I don't live that kind of life, but I feel like it could have been worse and it could have been better if I were to be there. So when I found him on this shelter, after uh, four hours, three to four hours of uh, traveling from Tijuana to this place, which was far, far away from the border in San, from the border in San Diego. Um, I'm sorry if I'm rambling a lot, but I'm gonna have to say that we found him as soon as I got to the place. Um, they closed the gates. They locked them with a the lock, and. I was like, you know, I don't even know what's, what am I going to expect over here. So they told me that they had left him here and that he was being bitten and he couldn't recognize me. And all I took with me was a couple of pictures that I had been posting um, in the walls in, in San Diego and uh, where we lived in Oceanside. And I took a picture and they said, how can you prove that he's your dad? So I pulled up my phone and I showed them the pictures of me and my dad, of, of him, of my mom, and I said, this is my dad. I found him, I saw him in front of me, full beard on, full mustache on, no head, all his hair was looking crazy, and I remember the pictures that I started taking of him, he looked like a homeless person, he looked completely different. He didn't look as alive as a certain person. He didn't look um, as responsive. And I lost it all at the moment. And then they told me that I, they needed money. And again, I'm not somebody who carries money all the time because I live on a daily basis, just like you probably do. And so I had, I think, uh, $20 or $25. So I gave them all. And I said, this is all I have. And they said, well, we need more because we want to make sure that you your dad is in a good financial stability. And I said, that he's gonna be, but he's not gonna be that way in here. And so they, they, they gave me a hard time. They did give me a hard time to get my dad back. Because they said that they they just wanted to make sure that my dad was gonna be in a very good financial place. And I was like, he's gonna be there, but I'm sorry, but I don't have anything, any, money, more, any more money. What they really wanted it, it was for me to give them money. And I was just not going to give them that because I didn't have that much money. I'm going to use the um, uh, Super Fine Line Brows for, from Clinique. The brown. I tried the Eat Cosmetics one. I, was very I wasn't very impressed with it. I'm going to give them a try again. Um, but overall, I think I'm running out of this one. I still have the Smashbox. Uh, this one is very creamy, and I really enjoyed this one. But the Smashbox will be next, and then if I need another one, I think I'm gonna jump into it with cosmetics. Let me know how you guys feel about the eight cosmetics products. So going back to this, I um, after a while of discussing why they needed to give me my dad back, um, we went, we came back. And we had a couple of friends of my, uh, one of my uncles in Mexico who were helping me to drive all the way down there. And because Duamel couldn't go all the way down there with me because uh, you gotta have a passport to go back to the Tijuana. And he had already been reported uh, way before when we had gone searching for my dad first that he didn't have a passport. So they were gonna let him go to Mexico, but they, he needed a passport. And we understood that, but Donald, of course, wasn't very happy about it, but he waited for me. And I think it was a very happy experience at the same time, too, because I feel like um, it was well worth it to um, 
to us to get back my dad. And I feel like uh, we needed that. I needed that and I showed my dad to my sisters and my mom. And for a couple of days, my two sisters, two older sisters said, um, we need you to think, rethink about your life. And we know you love California. And this is all I remember, most of it. And they would they would tell me we I brought him back to California and we stayed over in a hotel, which my sisters helped me pay, and um, they said we need you to rethink your life, and you're younger and you don't have any more money, and we want to make sure that our dad is being well taken care of. So uh, we wanted to know if you could bring him back all the way to from California to send from California to Indiana or to the other state where my other sister is living. And we are going to help you. We are going to take care of him. But we want to make sure that you can help us too. So we want to know if you can move over here with us. Like not in their own home, but close to them. So things will be easier on us. So I thought about it a little bit. And I had never had a, a relationship with my family like that. I had never been really close to the sisters. And um, to me, it was a little something. Something came in me and I said, why not? Let's do that. Let's go ahead and jump into it and try to see if things are gonna work out. And uh, I was very hopeful about it. And things didn't go as planned. We moved over here. If you guys wanna know a little bit more, please tell me uh, to make another video. But overall, this is what it looks like. I would say that the foundation, I'm gonna actually put, uh, I'm gonna actually get my glasses on. Foundation wise, it looks really, really good. But I do see it sitting on here, like over here, I see it sitting, and I see a lot of the texture in my skin, a lot. Uh, powders sit completely fine, but they are kind of breaking, it's, I don't know if it's the consistency of the highlighters, but overall they don't look like amazing. Like they look like, a, I don't know if it's the way that I apply them. But they are breaking and separating. And this one's on this side too and over here too. I don't know if it's because of the quality of the highlighters or the quality of the foundation. Uh, but the, the shade of this Wet n Wild Caution, it's really, really nice. I really like it. I don't like it that it, it, it's just raking. Like I can see it right here. I don't know if it's me, my method of application. But I can see the porcelain texture in here. Over here, I can see more of the fine lines that I usually have and I try to avoid having. I feel like I see more of that. Um, I'm gonna have to say that I, I will pass on this one. This is probably for somebody who is more combo to oily or oily. Um, it says that it's not tested on animals and it has 0.52 ounces. I remember this one was around $8. Um, I don't recommend it because I, first of all, you don't get as much product in this cushion. I think you can just flip it over and get more. But this cushion doesn't look quite well as to either my It Cosmetics or uh, my stick foundations. They don't, it doesn't look that great, if that makes any sense. I mean, powders look really good, um, but they're still a little bit separating. I'm gonna go ahead and just mist it out and blend it out a little bit more and see how it works. But overall, I feel like it's yeah. I feel like it's not, it's not like as popping. It's not as showing as I wish it would. And the shade is amazing, but the texture is not great. So I'll, I'll leave you guys with this. I hope you guys can tell me how do you guys feel about this, um, this new products that I tried. I really enjoyed the colors in the Academy of Color, and I really enjoyed the shade on this one. But I don't feel like it's that great. Um, I'm gonna pass on this one. I'm gonna try this one still to see how this ones work. And this one I really enjoyed. The honey eye patch. I don't enjoy the eye, uh, the honey scent, but it, I can't even tell what it is in here, what ingredients it has, because it's all in Korean. So hey, hello. So I hope you guys like this video. Tell me what do you guys think, and if you guys wanna see a second part on this video. I'll see you guys soon, bye-bye.